You are listening to The Ace, Alex Cardinal Entertainment Network, with your host, the crazy Alex Cardinal from Springfield, Massachusetts. You can expect the unexpected on The Ace Network. Now, on to today's show. You are listening to The Alex Cardinelli Show here on Ace Network. The Alex Cardinelli Show is a talk show that will talk about anything and everything from WWE wrestling to movie reviews to politics to even current news and events. You will get your entertainment and news sick. Alex Cardinelli promises to deliver a quality talk show that you will enjoy. Alex will share topics you want to hear with the young man's point of view. So what do you have to say? Do you, the listener, want a piece of the action? We'll get in on the action by calling into the talk show at 1-347-989-8142. Are you ready for a fun talk show? Then let's get on to Alex Cardinelli, who is live right now at Ace Network Studios. Take it away, Alex. Do you love to cook and bake? Do you love getting in the kitchen and creating some magic? Or are you someone who wants to cook but doesn't know how? Well, you're tuned into the right place. You're tuned into Cooking with Alex Cardinelli right here on Ace Network. Alex is a former chef with six years of culinary experience plus lifelong cooking memory he has from his mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Alex will teach you to cook with tasty tips and tricks and his many delicious recipes. So who is ready to cook? I bet you're hungry, so let's get into the kitchen. Here's Chef Alex. Coming your way tonight. 
Now, today's show is being broadcast live, so that means I can take live callers. You're welcome to call in at 1-347-989-8142. That's 1-347-989-8142. Come call in and share your personal favorite childhood foods. I'm eager to find out what some of my favorite listeners' favorite foods are. So go ahead and tell me. 1-347-989-8142. Come on. Why not share your favorite childhood foods? 1-347-989-8142. I'll answer any calls that I get tonight. All right, we got a lot to talk about tonight, so let's get started. I'll start with how I got into cooking. I know a lot of you, my listeners who like my cooking shows, always wonder how I, Chef Alex Cardinelli, got into cooking. Well, tonight I'm going to tell you. So here's how I, Alex Cardinelli, got into cooking. First, I watched my mom, my grandmother, and and, and my Italian great-grandmother cook. That was the best way to learn. And in my personal experience, it's the best way to learn how to cook. The best way to learn is to watch your family members cook, and more specifically, your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmothers cook. And luckily for me, my mom, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother know how to make some delicious food. So that's one way I learned how to get into cooking was by learning through my family. All right, the second way I got into cooking was I began cooking with my mom and my great-grandmother at the age of 12. I also had a cooking class in the eighth grade. So I learned how to cook at a relatively young age. Twelve years old in middle school, I learned how to cook. So I learned at the young age to cook, and I learned from my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my mother how to cook, and I also had middle school. In middle school, in the eighth grade, I had a cooking class. So some of the very first things I ever learned to cook were pasta and butter, chocolate chip cookies, and my very first meal that I learned to make was chicken parmesan. And chicken parmesan, for those of you who don't know, is one of my personal favorite entrees of all time. And then uh, I learned how to make eggs in a basket, and that was something I learned how to make in middle school. And basically, eggs in a basket is similar to French toast, but instead of using scrambled eggs, all you do is take a donut cutter, a biscuit cutter, or a glass and cut a hole and a piece of bread, and butter that bread with some butter, and you can put a fried egg in there, or you can put some uh, scrambled eggs where that hole is. That's why it's called eggs in a basket. The egg goes right in the basket where you created the basket with the hole. That's where the egg is going to go. I also learned how to make cakes. Um, Cakes are a great item to make in the kitchen, and much more. So basically, I was already cooking at the age of 12 with my mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and going to um, cooking class in middle school really boosted my advantage of cooking. But by the time high school rolled around, I wanted to learn more about cooking, so I ended up going to a a vocational high school right here in Springfield, Massachusetts called Putnam Vocational Technical High School, and I enrolled in culinary arts right at Putnam. So in high school, I intended a vocational school, and culinary arts was my shop or vocational area of study. I learned the ins and outs of the restaurant business. Now, of course, I learned how to cook food professionally, and without a doubt, What I thought I knew about cooking before high school, I learned a thousand times more by the time I graduated. Now, I'm able to cook high-end dishes. I'm also now Thursday certified 
and I have a culinary art certificate that will never expire. So should I want to work in a restaurant again, provided my back holds up, I can. So now I have the professional aspect of cooking as well. So I have my personal cooking aspect, and now I have my professional cooking aspect with my Sir Safe certification and my culinary art certificate. But unfortunately, I do have a back disability, which may not be supported with me standing on my feet for more than 10 hours. So, which is why I decided not to pursue um, going to culinary art school any longer after I had graduated from high school. But I'm going to explain that right now. Now, I attended Branford Hall, a small culinary art school, before briefly my back gave up. So I attended Branford Hall Culinary Art School briefly until I, my back started hurting and such. Now, in Branford Hall, I sharpened my knife skills much, much, much better than before, and now I have professional knife skills, and I learned about desserts, one of my personal favorite things about cooking. You know, I do love a good pasta meal, I do love a good burger, I do love a good pizza, but one thing in this world that I love more than any foods is desserts, and you can tell. Um, desserts are awesome, but I do love to cook too. It's more about uh, eating good foods to me. Um, desserts are good, but there are other good foods out there, but I do love desserts too. All right, so that is how I got into cooking, I guess you would say. That's the best way for me to sum up how I got into cooking. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about childhood favorite foods. Don't forget, you can call in live at 1-347-989-8142. If you're listening live, to talk about your favorite childhood favorite foods. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Here are some of my personal favorite childhood foods. First is a good old classic American cheeseburger. Now, I remember growing up, I always had to have a cheeseburger for lunch or dinner. I don't know what my obsession was with cheeseburgers when I was a kid, but, man, did I love cheeseburgers. And even to this day, I still love a good burger. Burgers are awesome. Now, back when I was a kid, it didn't matter where the cheeseburger came from. It could be from McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, on the grill, or homemade. I had to have a cheeseburger. And studies have shown that a lot of kids love hamburgers and more specifically cheeseburgers. So I was one of those kids that loved cheeseburgers growing up. And I still do love cheeseburgers, especially during this time of year. It's springtime right now, and i got to say that cheeseburgers are awesome around this time of year. So cheeseburgers were, are my first favorite childhood food. My second favorite childhood food brings out the Italian in me. With a name like Cardinelli, you have to figure that I am Italian, which I am. So my second favorite food as a child growing up is mozzarella sticks, and I loved mozzarella sticks. I mean, how can you not love gooey, delicious, crispy mozzarella sticks? You've got a fresh piece of mozzarella coated in egg wash, flour, and breadcrumbs to give it that extra crispiness. Now, mozzarella sticks were an awesome childhood favorite food of mine. And then my third favorite childhood food is meatballs. Now, believe it or not, not too many kids my age, back when I was a kid, were into meatballs, but I actually enjoyed having meatballs as a kid. Some people... To this day, as adults, still don't like meat, don't like meatballs. The people that I know don't like a nice meatball and marinara sauce. But as a kid, I loved meatballs and uh, marinara sauce. And right now, I still love meatballs as well. Now, as a kid, I loved macaroni and butter. Now, this is a simple Italian uh, entree. If you don't have 
too much time to cook. Italians would simply make this dish if they only had like 10 or 15 minutes to spare and they were hungry. And this dish is flavorful enough. You've got that nice starch taste from the pasta, and you've got that great taste from fresh, real butter. If you're making a true classic Italian macaroni and butter like I grew up with, you have to use real butter. In my personal opinion, you don't want to use margarine. Margarine is disgusting. I would personally recommend using real butter because do you know that half of the margarines out there have nasty chemicals in them that make them almost relatable to plastic? That is disgusting in my personal opinion. But, yes, as a kid, I ate plenty of macaroni and butter, and I'm pretty sure a lot of my listeners who are old enough to remember having macaroni and butter, I bet you that you guys are going to go out and have some macaroni and butter in a couple of days or so, because macaroni and butter has been a lo- around for quite a long time now. Um, I think it was, I think it got started in like the 1940s, so a lot of my listeners should be old enough to remember macaroni and butter, and it, it seems to be quite popular even now. All right, uh, a lot of the kids now still like macaroni and butter. All right. This one is a true American classic, and this one is my next favorite childhood food, and that is macaroni and cheese. I have never met anyone, kids or adults, who don't like macaroni and cheese. What is there not to like about macaroni and cheese? Macaroni and cheese is awesome. You've got some delicious elbow macaroni with some delicious cheddar cheese sauce and some delicious flavorings. So macaroni and cheese is a great meal. And later on in the show, in like 10 minutes or so, I'm going to have two delicious macaroni and cheese recipes that I am personally going to share with you. So stick around for that. And then baked ziti was something that I enjoyed as a kid growing up. Growing up in an Italian household, we had a lot of baked ziti. Pizza is a food that I loved as a kid, and historically studies have shown that a lot of kids love pizza. The most common types of pizza consumed by kids are cheese pizza and pepperoni pizza. So a lot of kids from the ages of four to 14 are going to be eating pizza, and I ate pizza at those ages, and I still eat pizza. Now, of course, I loved fried chicken growing up. Um, I had fried chicken not so often, but I had it enough to remember it in my childhood. Fried chicken is a uh, great meal, and I remember my mother making homemade fried chicken every now and then. Of course, chicken parmesan is one of my personal favorite childhood foods because that was the first meal that I ever learned how to cook. So chicken parmesan will always be a food that I always remember from my childhood. I definitely love chicken parm, and chicken parmesan will always be a personal favorite food of mine because it's always going to bring me back to my childhood. And a lot of kids nowadays seem to love chicken parmesan. And um, if they don't, there's always the chicken parms that I make from my brother. So for kids that don't like marinara sauce, I suggest making the chicken parm that I make from my brother. Next time you're making chicken parm and you've got a kid that does not like tomato sauce, just put regular cheese on top of their chicken and skip the tomato sauce. And I can guarantee you, your kid that does not like tomato sauce is going to like chicken parm. Another classic uh, childhood favorite food of mine is the classic grilled cheese and tomato soup. I had that when I had colds and when I had fevers. And when I was not feeling well, I had a lot of grilled cheese and tomato soups. They were awesome. And I think that the grilled cheese and tomato soups are a great classic American food. The next favorite childhood food of mine is Chinese food. I've always loved Chinese food my whole entire life. I had Chinese food a lot as a kid. And to this day, I have Chinese food every now and then. But Chinese food is the food that I remember from my childhood. Next, we've got McDonald's. 
And how can I not remember those wonderful McDonald's Happy Meals that came with uh, a lot of toys? That's the one thing I remember about the McDonald's Happy Meals is that they always came with a lot of toys. McDonald's is always known for their Happy Meals because they always satisfy children with the toys they give with their uh, Happy Meals. But I like the McDonald's Happy Meal food as well. Classic chicken nuggets, classic cheeseburger, classic hamburger. And in 2000, somewhere in 2000, they introduced the um, Mighty Kids Meal, which was made for teenagers. I'm not really sure of the exact name because it's been a long time since I've been a teenager and I had a kids meal. I think it's Mighty Kids or Mighty Teens or something, but they've got kids meals now dedicated to teenagers, and I remember that because I've been having McDonald's for a long time in my childhood. And then, of course, a classic childhood favorite for most people I had peanut butter and jelly and peanut butter and fluff, two classic American sandwiches that I loved as a child. Every now and then I'll have them, but I don't eat them as often as I did when I was young, um, and that may be for many reasons, um, because typically when I eat peanut butter, my stomach does not handle it too well, but... I had a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and peanut butter and marshmallow sandwiches as a kid. Now, they are a great sandwich if you um, are hungry and you don't have much food. Then that's the time that I would eat a peanut butter and jelly or a peanut butter and a marshmallow sandwich. But I remember having them a lot as kids. Then, of course, pancakes. They're like the classic kids' breakfast. They had a lot of pancakes, pancakes and French toast for breakfast. And then, of course, cookies. As a kid, I loved sweets. And as an adult now, I love sweets even more. But as a kid, one of my personal favorite sweets was cookies. I loved sugar, chocolate chip, M&Ms, etc., uh, in the cookie flavors. And uh, in a couple minutes here, uh, I'm cooking the South Cardinelli Childhood Favorite Food Show. I'm going to have some great recipes for you. And then I like brownies as a kid. And one of my personal favorite cakes as a kid was a classic vanilla cake. I love vanilla cake. And I know some of you are probably saying a vanilla cake is pretty bland, but trust me, I love vanilla cake. Oreos. I can't think or fathom where to begin. Oreos have been my life. I have been eating Oreos all my life. So I cannot neglect to mention Oreos on today's show. Now, Oreos, I love them all. I love all the flavors of Oreos. Now, I remember back in 2002, I believe it was, when Oreo first introduced the Golden Oreos. And they actually did a flip Golden Oreo, which was one half of the Oreo was a chocolate cookie, and the other half was a Golden Oreo. I went bonkers for that. Those were my favorite cookies. And now we have the Golden Oreo. But back in 2002, when they first released them, we had the Heads and Tails Oreos, which was half chocolate and half golden. And you had a golden Oreo with chocolate filling back then. And now we've got the golden Oreo with the vanilla filling. But as you can tell, I love all things Oreos, which are very, very good in my personal opinion. Okay? So next time or any time you stop by to visit me here in Springfield, Mass., make sure you bring Oreos with you because... Now you know that I love Oreos, any kind. I loved Oreos at the age of 6 and at the age of 21. I'm still loving Oreos. Okay, now these are a campfire classic, and I love these as a kid. I'm talking about the classic American snack, s'mores. S'mores are perfect for kids in the summer and springtime. So it's the perfect time 
to bring out s'mores this time of year. Now, s'mores are wonderful. I loved graham crackers. I loved marshmallows. And I loved chocolate as a kid. So um, I really can't think of any other thing that I loved more as a kid with graham crackers, chocolate, and marshmallow than s'mores. And I guarantee you, your kids are going to like s'mores as well. If I like s'mores as a kid, your kids are going to like s'mores as a kid as well. And then, of course, like I said, I'm going to like anything with Oreos in it. So as a kid, I loved cookies and cream ice cream. Now, I frequented McDonald's a lot as a kid, and McDonald's in, in 2000 or 2001 introduced a McFlurry, which is a soft serve ice cream. And they introduced the Oreo McFlurry, which was delicious. They still have it to this day. It's pretty good. It's soft serve ice cream. And believe it or not, the Oreos are crispy in their soft serve ice cream, or actually, the Oreos are crunchy in their soft serve ice cream and believe it or not the Oreos have that firm texture because a lot of times nine times out of ten in a cookie and cream ice cream your Oreos are going to get soft and mushy in the ice cream but with an Oreo McFlurry the Oreos stay nice and crunchy and they keep their firm texture now believe it or not I just did a food review on the Oreo McFlurry on my brand new YouTube channel called AC Food Review. So if you love Chef Cornelli Cooking Show and Cooking with South Cornelli, and if you love me, check out my wonderful YouTube channel called AC Food Reviews right here on YouTube. You guys are going to love it. All right, that's called AC Food Reviews. And they are actually a brand new sponsor for the Ace Network. And the last favorite childhood food of mine is, of course, donuts. Now, some of my favorite donuts as a kid would include a chocolate cake donut and chocolate sprinkles donut. I remember as a kid, every time we went to Dunkin' Donuts, I had to have chocolate sprinkles donuts. And it seems to me that Dunkin' Donuts markets those chocolate sprinkles donuts to the younger audiences. So the chocolate sprinkles donuts are marketed for kids. So those are my personal favorite childhood foods. Again, those are cheeseburgers, mozzarella sticks, meatballs, macaroni and butter, macaroni and cheese, baked ziti, pizza, fried chicken, chicken parm, grilled cheese and tomato soup, Chinese food, McDonald's, peanut butter and jelly and peanut butter and fluff, pancakes, cookies, brownies, vanilla cake, Oreos, s'mores, cookies and cream ice cream, Oreo McFlurry, and donuts. So now you have Chef Alex's favorite childhood foods. So listeners, what are yours? Let me know your personal favorite childhood favorite foods. So if you're listening live, you can go ahead and call in one three four seven nine eight nine eight one four two and tell me your personal favorite childhood foods. But if you're listening archive, you can tell me your favorite childhood foods by tweeting me at Alice Cardinelli one on Twitter. That's on Twitter at Alice Cardinelli one and tell me your favorite childhood foods. Or you can post in the comment section below what your personal favorite childhood favorite foods are, and I look forward to your responses. All right. Now it's the best part of today's show. Well, it's the best part of today's show, in my personal opinion. It's childhood food recipe time, where I, Chef Alice Cardinelli, am going to teach you how to make some of my foods that I loved as a child for your children or for you to enjoy personally in your kitchen. So you can make these for your kids, for your kids to enjoy, or for you personally. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten recipes that I'm going to share with you. So I got ten, I got ten wonderful childhood favorite recipes that I'm going to share with you. So let me go ahead and get started and share my favorite childhood food recipes. My first recipe I'm going to share is my mother's baked macaroni and cheese recipe that uh, everyone loves. It's the recipe that I first used, and it was based from her. So here is the Cardinelli family baked macaroni and cheese. It serves about a dozen people or more, depending on portion size. And if you're going to be doing this as an entree, it will serve about a dozen people. But if you're using it as a side for, let's say, a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas or any kind of uh, dinner, then it probably will serve about a dozen and a half people. So for the Cardinelli family baked macaroni and cheese, you're going to need three pounds of macaroni. You can use anything from penne, ziti, rotini to elbows. You're going to need four tablespoons of butter plus two extra tablespoons of butter, so a total of six tablespoons, four tablespoons of flour, six cups of milk, or you can do three cups of heavy cream and three cups of milk, or simply just six cups of half and half, four bags of cheese, one cup of Parmesan cheese, a quarter cup of seasoning, and five tablespoons of breadcrumbs. Directions. Boil your pasta water. Add plenty of salt to season the pasta. While the water boils, begin making the cheese sauce. Create a roux by adding the four tablespoons of butter and letting it melt. Then add the four tablespoons of flour, cooking for one to two minutes until it turns nice and gold. Add in your milk or cream and whisk constantly for six minutes. Turn heat down to medium and let simmer until it thickens. Then once it's thick enough to your liking, you then add your cheeses and seasonings. Turn off heat and keep warm. Cook your pasta just until al dente. Remember that your pasta will be baked later on. Place pasta in a large aluminum pan. Toss with the extra two tablespoons of butter and half teaspoon of olive oil to prevent pasta from sticking while baking. Add the cheese sauce and mix until fully coated. Combine the breadcrumbs with either melted butter, two tablespoons extra of melted butter, or some olive oil, and crumble over mac and cheese. Bake at 375 for 30 minutes, and that's going to result in a nice, crunchy, and creamy macaroni and cheese. That's my mother's macaroni and cheese. And ladies and gentlemen, if nice and crunchy on the top, but moist and creamy on the inside. If you love a delicious baked macaroni and cheese, you're going to love that one. All right, now I make a pretty killer macaroni and cheese myself. Now I love cooking in a crock pot. So if you've got a big family or if you love cooking in a crock pot, this macaroni and cheese is going to be for you. So, my friends, here is Alice Cardinelli's mac and cheese. I call this the crock pot mac and cheese by Alice Cardinelli because you can cook it in a crock pot. So here are my ingredients for my mac and cheese. You're going to need four cans of cream of cheddar soup, you're going to need two to three boxes of elbow macaroni, you're going to need some sour cream, now I personally use one eight ounce container of sour cream, but you can use however much sour cream you want, you can use anywhere from one cup to a half a cup to half of the eight ounce, four ounces, depending on how much you like sour cream, but I use the eight ounces, four bags of cheese, half cup of Parmesan cheese, and one cup of milk or heavy cream, or one cup of half and half. Now, what you can do is you can mix your cheeses. That's what I forgot to tell you guys on uh, the first recipe I gave you, the first mac and cheese recipe I gave you, is you can mix your cheeses. You can use mozzarella, cheddar, provolone, 
whatever kind of cheese you like. I happen to use um, I happen to use cheddar, white cheddar, Monterey Jack, mozzarella, and sometimes in a great while I will use Munster cheese in my delicious macaroni and cheese. And I gotta tell you, Munster cheese adds some great flavor to your macaroni and cheese. You're also going to need some seasoning for my crock pot mac and cheese. Now, I won't go too heavily on seasoning because your kids might not like too much seasoning, but um, I recommend some good classic salt and pepper, a little bit of paprika, and you can use like a half teaspoon of mustard, and that should be good for your seasoning. Directions. Cook your pasta to la dente. Turn crock pot on medium heat. Add cooked pasta, cream of cheddar soup. Toss well and make sure the pasta gets coated. Cook for three minutes. Then add your sour cream and let sour cream cook off for ten minutes. Then add your milk or cream and let cook for ten more minutes. Add your cheeses in four batches within five minutes of each other. So your first batch you'll add at the beginning. Second batch you'll wait for five minutes. Third batch, you'll wait for 10 minutes. And the fourth batch, you're going to add after 15 minutes. In the fourth batch, you're going to add the rest of the cheese plus that half cup of Parmesan cheese. Then you'll add your seasoning and let the macaroni and cheese cook on low heat for 20 more minutes. Serve. And this macaroni and cheese is great as an entree if you add ham or bacon to it, or it's great as a side dish. So, like I said earlier, this is a great mac and cheese if you love cooking in the crock pot. Okay? A very creamy, moist, and delicious mac and cheese. I can guarantee you my crock pot macaroni and cheese is very, very simple to make, and it tastes a lot better than that Kraft macaroni and cheese garbage. I guarantee it. All right, so those are my two macaroni and cheese recipes. As you guys know, I loved macaroni and cheese as a kid, so I'm pretty sure you guys did as well. So now you have my mac and cheese recipes. All right, my next recipe that I am personally going to share with you is s'mores. S'mores are an American classic, and s'mores are very easy to make. Yes, that's right. All you need for s'mores is graham crackers, um, Hershey's chocolate, and marshmallows. Now, you can use any kind of marshmallows you like. I tend to prefer to stick with the original plain marshmallows because I think the plain marshmallows are better for s'mores because you don't get like a strawberry flavoring into the chocolate because the warm chocolate's going to melt the marshmallow or vice versa the warm marshmallow is going to melt the chocolate and if you're using a strawberry marshmallow you're going to be getting a strawberry flavor into the marshmallow but if that's what you're after you can do that but I just like to use our regular marshmallows so what you're going to need is a grill, but you don't have to use a grill. You can simply use a microwave, all right? If you're inside, you're not, you're not camping outside, you can use a microwave to make s'mores. And if you don't have a grill where you are outside, all you need is fire or something to roast your marshmallow, basically. So what you do if you're outside is you roast your marshmallow, and then you take two graham crackers, split them in half, and you put a Hershey bar on the bottom of one of the graham crackers, and you take the marshmallow, and you sandwich it together, and the heat from the marshmallow is going to melt the chocolate, and that is very good. Now, i got to tell you, there's nothing better in the world than having marshmallow world, meat chocolate world, meat and graham cracker world. It's very good. Now, if you're inside using a microwave, all you do is layer one graham cracker with a chocolate piece on the bottom, marshmallow on top, and put that in the microwave for no more than 18 seconds. You put it in there longer than 18 seconds, your chocolate's going to burn, and it's going to smell horrendous. So microwave that no longer than 18 seconds. And on the grill, what you do, if you take a graham cracker, you add a chocolate bar, a marshmallow, 
and you put a graham cracker on top, and you wrap aluminum foil over it and put it on the grill and cook that for no more than one minute. And that is how you make a delicious s'more. S'mores are very easy to make. And if you need to see eye-to-eye or face-to-face on how to make s'mores, I will be doing a s'mores video on my brand-new YouTube channel called AC Food Reviews coming up next on my YouTube channel. But there are plenty of s'more-making videos on YouTube for you to check out in the meantime. All right? So that was my delicious s'more recipe. Well, it wasn't personally my recipe, but it's a way to make s'mores told to you from me personally. All right, my next recipe is my personal homemade meatballs, because as I said, meatballs were very popular when I was a kid, and I liked meatballs. So now you and your kids are going to like meatballs. So here is my personal homemade meatball recipe. One pound of ground beef, one pound of ground veal, and one pound of ground pork. You're going to need a half of an onion chopped into really small pieces, about an inch. Um, you can use any size onions you want, but I like mine to about the size of an inch, not too, not too big. You're also going to need a green bell pepper chopped into half of an inch pieces. You want these green bell peppers to be really, really small. So cut them into half of an inch slice. All right. You'll need three eggs. You'll need a half cup of Parmesan cheese, a half cup of mozzarella cheese, and you're going to need about two to three cups of breadcrumbs. Mix that all together. Now, if this, if this seems a little bit runny to you or too watery, then you'll add a half cup more breadcrumbs until it becomes a nice ball. Then you're going to roll out those meatballs and bake them in a 370 degrees Fahrenheit oven for 25 minutes. And I bake my meatballs because when you fry meatballs, you're adding a lot of extra calories to your meatballs. And what kids, we're trying to cut calories. So I bake my meatballs in the oven to save a lot of calories and save yourself from all the labor of frying because when you fry stuff you got to sit there and watch it but when you put it in the oven you can talk on the phone while you're in the kitchen waiting for your meatballs to finish cooking all right and by baking your meatballs you're saving calories for dessert hee <laughs> hee okay all right so that is uh my meatball recipe. Now you can put those meatballs in your classic marinara sauce. You can put them in a nice brown sauce, and they will do well. It, plain even. I've been I've been known to eat these meatballs plain, but you can cook do, serve them any way you want. Like I said, in a nice marinara sauce or a nice brown sauce. All right. Now let's get into the sweets because as a kid I love sweets. So here we go. The first recipe. First sweet I'm going to tell you about is a delicious Oreo cupcake. I loved Oreos as a kid, and I loved cupcakes. So here we go. This is kind of a cheating recipe, but hey, as a kid, it was very easy to make, and it's still easy to make as a 21-year-old. Oreo cupcakes, and what you're going to need is a chocolate cake mix or a vanilla cake mix. For me, it depends on what I feel like that day. Do I feel like a nice... Um, chocolate cake with Oreos, or do I feel like a nice vanilla cake with Oreos? So it's personal preference. You're going to need 20 Oreo cookies, and you need the cream filling attached. All right? You want half. So you want 20 Oreo cookie halves with cream filling attached. Directions. Preheat the oven to 350. Twist Oreos in half and set aside the extra cookies for crushing the frosting. Place the side with cream filling in the bottom of each cupcake liner, cream side facing up. Prepare your cake mix. Fill cupcake liners halfway. Bake at directed time on box. Remove from oven and let cool. Now you want to make the simple Oreo buttercream. And here is my simple Oreo buttercream. Eight tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of shortening, two tablespoons of cream cheese, four cups of powdered sugar, one to two cups of milk, and your crushed Oreos. 
The milk is going to make your uh, buttercream a little loose if it's too thick. It'll thin out your buttercream. You only need a tablespoon at a time. Okay? You may not need milk at all, depending on how softened your butter is. All right, and you're also going to need crushed Oreos. So cream together your butter, shortening, and cream, cream cheese. Make sure your butter and cream cheese is really softened. If it really is softened, you might, you might be able to eliminate the need for milk. Then you're going to add in your powdered sugar and a vanilla extract if you're using. And if it is really thick, then I add a tablespoon of milk at a time until it becomes um, piping consistency. Then you will take your crushed Oreos and fold that into your buttercream. And there's your Oreo buttercream. Now take a Wilton pastry bag and fill that up and decorate with a nice star tip. And once you've got your Oreo buttercream on top of your Oreo cupcakes, you can add a, another half of an Oreo on top for added garnish. And that, my friends, is my delicious Oreo cupcake recipe. Next, we've got my Cardinelli family vanilla cake that I made as a kid. And basically what I did was I took a vanilla cake mix and I added sprinkles to it. So I actually made that a confetti cake by means of all the cake mixes that are out there. So make sure in my recipe you take a vanilla cake mix and you add some sprinkles to make a confetti confetti cake. Bake that for whatever temperature the cake mix calls for, and then use my Oreo buttercream recipe that I uh, just gave you guys, but omit the Oreos. And omit means take out the Oreos. Just use the butter, shortening, cream cheese, butter, sugar, and milk. And frost the vanilla cake with that, and decorate the sides of the vanilla cake with those extra sprinkles. Okay? All right, now my next recipe that I'm going to share with you is my delicious sugar cookie recipe. As a kid, I had grown up loving sugar cookies. So here is my great sugar cookie recipe. You're going to need two and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, half teaspoon of baking powder, one cup of butter softened, one and a half cups of white sugar, one egg, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Preheat the oven to 375. In a small bowl, stir together flour, baking soda, and baking powder. Set aside. In a large bowl, cream together the butter and sugar until smooth. Be an egg and vanilla. Gradually blend in the dry ingredients. Roll rounded teaspoonfuls of dough into balls and place onto ungreased cookie sheets. Bake 8 to 10 minutes in the unpreheated oven or until golden. Let it stand on cookie sheet 2 minutes before removing to cool on wire racks. And that is the sugar cookie recipe. My next cookie recipe is the Cardinelli Family M&M cookie recipe. And for that, you're going to need 1 cup of packed brown sugar, half cup of white sugar, 1 cup of shortening, 2 eggs, 1.5 teaspoons of vanilla extract, 2.5 cups of all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon of baking soda, 1 teaspoon of salt, and 1.5 and cups of candy-coated M&Ms. In a large bowl, mix sugar, egg, shortening, and vanilla thoroughly. Add flour, salt, and baking soda to cream mixture. Blend well. Add three-fourths cup of M&M candies. Drop dough by teaspoonfuls on the cookie sheet. Slightly push a few candies on top of each dough ball with remaining candies. Bake at 350 for 9 to 11 minutes to your liking. And my last and final cookie recipe for you is the Carnelli Family Chocolate Chip Cookie Recipe. One cup of butter flavor shortening, three-fourths cup of white sugar, three-fourths cup of brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of Mexican vanilla extract, two-fourths cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and two cups of milk chocolate chips. Preheat your oven to 350, grease cookie sheets. In a large bowl, cream together the butter flavor shortening, brown sugar, and white sugar until light and fluffy. Add the eggs one at a time, beating well, 
with each addition, then stir in the vanilla. Combine the flour, baking soda, and salt. Gradually stir into the cream mixer. Finally, fold in the chocolate chips. Drop by rounded spoonfuls onto the prepared cookie sheets. Bake for 8 to 10 minutes in the preheated oven until light brown. Allow cookies to cool on uh, baking sheet for 5 minutes before moving to a wire rack to cool completely. And that, my friends, is all of the cookie recipes for today's show. As I said earlier in the show, I loved cookies as a kid, and now I love cookies as an adult. And now you kids can try my delicious cookie recipes. Now, you can take any of my cookie recipes that I just gave you, whether they're sugar cookies, M&M cookies, or the delicious chocolate chip cookies. You can make ice cream sandwiches out of them by taking your favorite ice cream out of the freezer, letting it come to room temperature for five minutes, and using a nice ice cream scoop, and place a small scoop of ice cream between one of the cookies and sandwich them together, and roll them in sprinkles or M&Ms or chocolate chips, and you've got a free ice cream sandwich that you made for yourself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are all ten of my childhood cooking recipes that I shared with you. I hope you guys will put those recipes to use, and I hope that you guys will use those recipes in the kitchen. Now, if you do use, if you do use those recipes, let me know how they come out by emailing me at alicecardinelli93 at gmail.com. That's alicecardinelli93 at gmail.com. If you want a specific recipe for any children, please email me at alice, uh, excuse me, please email me at alicecardinelli93 at gmail.com. If you need any of these recipes, please feel free to email me again at alexcarnelli93 at gmail.com. All right, my last topic for today's show is tips for young people who want to start cooking. And by young people, I mean people who are in their teenage years, 12 to 14 years old. So my tips first. Always have an adult around you. Have your mom or dad or guardian around you so that you don't cut yourself or burn yourself in the kitchen. A lot of adults get injured in the kitchen. So teenagers or kids, don't be a fool like the adults and get injured in the kitchen. My next tip for you is to begin by cooking something real simple. This could be a grilled cheese. This could be a Kraft macaroni and cheese. This could be eggs. This could be pasta, tomato sauce, etc. Just cook something real simple. Or if you want to be baking something, I know a lot of teenage girls and some teenage boys want to bake cookies, cakes, cupcakes, etc. You can begin by baking on making cake mixes, cupcake mixes, and, and baking them, okay? The next tip I have for you is to watch your mom and grandmother cook. They are going to teach you everything you need to know. Ask if you can help cook with your mom and grandmother. The best way to learn is to get in the kitchen and have hands-on experience with someone you love. Sure, you can go to culinary school like I did and learn how to cook and learn how to cook professionally, but if you don't learn to cook for someone you love, you won't have that emotional cooking experience you need. For example, in the future, you may want to prepare a dinner for your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and that is the perfect time to whip out grandmother's or your mother's recipe. All right, so make sure you learn how to cook with your mother and grandmother so that when they die, because later on eventually they will die, you'll be able to create their recipes the same way they did in your kitchen by simply learning to cook with them. You're going to take their advice and their recipe and create the same way they cook it, hopefully. I, I Actually, I can replicate my grandmother and my mother's recipe because I was always in the kitchen when they were cooking. So that's my advice for you. Watch cooking videos on YouTube. They'll help you out. Um, but 
you can only watch so many cooking videos. I think hands-on experience in the kitchen is going to help you a lot more. But definitely watching cooking videos on YouTube will be a lot uh, more helpful as well. Now, my last tip for you is to make friends with chefs and people who like to cook. I have made friends with many chefs, and they have taught me a lot of great tricks that I never knew, and I learned how to cook from them. So make friends with chefs and people who like to cook. Me personally, I have made friends with many chefs, Chef George Norrell, Chef Matt West, um, and some of the other great chefs that I know, like Chef Sean from the fantastic Facebook group, Phenomenal Entertainment. He has a great Facebook group. He has a great chef. So Chef Sean is a great man. So make friends with all of the wonderful chefs and cooks that you may know. And that is my tip on how to be a great cook as someone that was a young age. Hopefully someone will be a replica of me as a cook. I started cooking at the age of 12, and I had all the wonderful people teaching me how to cook. All right? Okay, so that is everything new that I wanted to add to this phenomenal show. So you got to learn my favorite childhood foods. You got to learn how to cook some of my personal favorite childhood foods with my great recipes. And I taught you how to cook at a young age. Now, way back in last year, back in the November of 2014, I did a childhood food interview on the Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show with my good friend, Mr. William T. Hannaford. So I'm going to go ahead and play that wonderful interview here on the ACE Network because I'm pretty sure a lot of my ACE Network listeners never got to hear that great interview. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is an interview from November of 2014 from the Chef Cornelli Cooking Show. Enjoy. Anyways, let me introduce you to our wonderful guest tonight. Our guest is my good friend, my best friend in the whole world, Mr. William T. William, how are you? And welcome to the Chef Cornelli Cooking Show. I'm doing fine, Alex, and thank you for inviting me on your show as a guest this evening. Thank you for coming on tonight. It's my privilege to have you here on the Chef Cornelli Cooking Show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Tonight, me and William are going to be talking about our favorite childhood comfort foods, and then we will discuss our favorite foods now. You can join us live by calling in at 646-716-6458, dial 1, to tell us your favorite childhood comfort foods. That, again, is 1-646-716-6458, dial 1. All right, let's get started. William, what are your favorite childhood comfort foods? Well, Alex, when I was a young man, uh, I grew up with things like uh, maple. You ever heard of that? Yeah, it's actually a pretty good cereal, hot cereal. Yeah, hot cereal. And uh, I had a lot of oatmeal when I was growing up uh, and cream of wheat. And uh, there was a killer breakfast my mom used to make. Uh, She used to take and cook bacon, and then she would uh, slice potatoes, uh, flat slices, and uh, she'd cook them in the bacon grease. And then she'd also cook her eggs in the bacon grease, and she made a a very good breakfast. I grew up uh, actually loving that breakfast that uh, stayed with me all these years, and I even make that for myself today. So, yeah, and uh, um, I'll think of some more foods uh, here. Let me think. I used to like, I one thing I used to like a lot of, because we were kind of poor when I was young, so every once in a while we'd get that commodity. You ever heard of commodity foods? No, I've actually never heard that. What is that? Well, it's like welfare. Uh, you would get a certain parcel every month, and there would be certain items of food in there, 
And one of the commodities we got was rice. So we, I used to eat a lot of cooked rice with sugar and milk in it, actually, like a cereal. Oh, rice pudding, basically. Oh, well, it, it had sugar and milk in it, and it was just regular rice. Uh, that That's all it was, uh, a staple, so that I could uh, have some energy and go to school, you know, and uh, participate and, and not go hungry, uh, like, like some other kids probably did at that time. Uh, we had a lot of poor children in our neighborhood. And uh, my mom did her best as a single parent to make sure that I got fed and got off to school with the best of them. So, yeah, that's one of the things I used to eat was rice with milk and sugar. wonder how that tastes. Uh it tastes like rice with milk and sugar. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, I, I might, I might, I must ask you, what are some of your favorite childhood comfort foods? Well, that's a, a great question, and I actually have a lot because I can remember back a little bit. Now, one of my favorite childhood comfort foods happens to be macaroni and cheese, and to this day, I still do like macaroni and cheese. I prefer the homemade version, but I, I also like the box macaroni and cheese as well. And macaroni and cheese is something that is really tasty, and I ate that a lot as a kid. My mother made homemade macaroni and cheese a lot growing up. Now everyone knows that I love pasta. Pasta was a childhood comfort food for me. Pasta is something that's a staple for mo most Italian families, including myself. And my great-grandmother actually would spend time making plenty of homemade pastas, such as homemade raviolis and homemade tornellinis. And um, she'd actually make homemade Alfredo sauce and homemade marinara sauce. So we had pasta a lot as a child growing up. Now, since I do live here in America instead of Italy, I did like a lot of the American foods growing up. I actually do like cheeseburgers. I remember growing up as a kid always having a cheeseburger for lunch whenever I could, and now to this day I still crave cheeseburgers, and I still love cheeseburgers. Now as a kid I definitely did love chicken nuggets. Those were a good childhood food memory of mine. I also like peanut butter and jelly as well. I don't really eat too much peanut butter and jelly now, but when I was a kid I really did like the peanut butter and jelly. Now, if I do have peanut butter and jelly, I have it as, as a French toast kind of breakfast that we don't have to use maple syrup. But um, basically, growing up as a kid, I had a lot of pasta, um, cheeseburgs, pizza, a lot of Italian food. I can say that most of my childhood was based around Italian food and things of that nature. We did go out to eat a lot, and we had a lot of Chinese food, too which was some of my favorite childhood food memories. And up until my teenage years, I've never had desserts. So in my teenage years, that's when I started getting taste for the sweets. And I can remember my very first dessert was my favorite dessert, and that is the red velvet cake. But we'll talk about desserts a little later on in the show. So that's wonderful. Now, my very first meal that I cooked was actually chicken parmesan, and I started cooking at the age of 12. And I figured I wanted to be a chef when I grew up, and um, I decided that I was going to start cooking at 12 years old from the guidance of my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my mother. And the first meal I ever made was chicken parmesan. And for those of you who don't know what chicken parmesan is, all it is is a breaded chicken that is topped with marinara sauce and some sort of Italian cheese that can be mozzarella, provolone, or parmesan. And that was the first thing that I cooked at 12 years old. And I see that we actually have our very first caller on the Chef Cornelli Cooking Show, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this caller live on the air. Hi, you're live on the Chef Cornelli Cooking Show. Yes, how are you doing, Alex? This is Jeff. I'm doing good. How are you today, sir? Not bad. I just thought I'd call in and let you know how the dishes went like I told you I would. How are you doing, William? All right, Thanks for calling in. Yep. 
What did you make? Well, everybody Jeff? loved. Well, first I made your recipe for the rice and mushroom stuffing, and everybody loved that. Oh, nice. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, and here's the funny part of the story I was telling you about. Like I told you, I had a 20-pound turkey, right? Yes. So I made the macaroni, like you said on your show, followed the recipe, and by the time Thanksgiving was over, all the macaroni was gone, and there were still 16 pounds of turkey. <laughs> <laughs> they, all loved your mac- they all loved the macaroni and cheese then, I guess. Yeah, they loved it. Like I said, I weighed the turkey on a little weigh thing afterwards, and it was 20 pounds to begin with, and there were 16 left afterwards, but all the macaroni was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Did they like to so that was yeah. a pause for Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I decided to call and let you know they both went well. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I think you're actually the first person to cook my recipes and tell me about it, so I appreciate that. Yeah, they were great. Well, I better awesome. let you guys get back to your show so I don't take up too much time. I'll get back to listening. Thanks for letting me call in. You're welcome, and thank you for calling in, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, you guys have a good afternoon. You too now. You too. Thank you for calling in. That was awesome to hear. Yeah, that was great. Awesome. So as I was saying, that was my first time cooking, and that was chicken parmesan. Now, William, what is the one food that you liked as a kid that you, you even have to have now as a older gentleman? Well, there is a meal that I make. I call it goulash, but it's not really a traditional goulash. What it is... It's elbow macaroni with hamburger, onions, and stewed tomatoes. And you cook everything, and you mix it all together, and I call it goulash. I think it's very uh, palatable and a good tasting, and uh, I I still make that today. Uh, I like it. It's uh, one of the meals I make each and every week. Uh, I love it. And uh, uh, and another meal that I still make today that I like a lot is spaghetti. Uh, spaghetti was one of the meals my mom used to make because actually it's a rather inexpensive meal to make. Uh, once you make enough sauce, it'll last. Uh, you know, you can, uh, I don't know what you feel about this, but uh, we used to freeze some of our sauce and bring it out and uh, thaw it out and use it for other meals. And uh, we used to get like two or three meals uh, a week out of the spaghetti sauce. And uh, we'd have spaghetti noodles or zita or, or, or elbow macaroni, and we'd use that sauce. And another meal that I used to like a lot when I was a kid was pizza. But I want to tell you something about pizza, Alex. But did you know that pizza was actually invented by the Chinese. The idea no, I never knew the, that. Yeah, pizza was thousands of years ago. It was actually invented by the Chinese, and it was given to the Italians, and the Italians uh, made it better and uh, claimed it and started to produce a lot of pizza, and uh, the Italians are really into pizza today. And they've changed the original recipe, the Chinese recipes, but, yeah, China was the first one to actually invent the pizza. I never knew that. It seems China yeah. always makes new stuff. Yeah. So those are the meals that, uh, that I really grew up that I, uh, with and that I still do today. Uh, I'm still rather poor, and these foods do put a little weight on your belt. That's very true, William, and I definitely uh, can agree with you on the goulash. That's how I make mine as well. So one of my favorite childhood meals growing up is goulash, and then, of course, the chicken parmesan, because that was the first meal that I started cooking when I was age 12. So chicken parm is probably my favorite food that I liked as a kid that I have to have now as a um, gentleman. I also like um, pancakes and waffles, too, as my breakfast staple as a kid. Now, uh, William, I know you have... Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry about that. No, I was just agreeing with you. 
<laughs> okay. Now, William, I know you have kids. What was their favorite foods growing up? Well, um, for one thing, I made my mother's killer breakfast for them a lot. Uh, they really like that. And uh, my children even make that today as well for themselves. So that was passed down uh, through the generations. Uh, my mother learned it from her mother. And and uh, it was sort of a, 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 a change from my great-grandmother uh, that was full-body Cherokee Indian. She used to make uh, something like that breakfast, but uh, she actually used salt pork and fried salt pork and uh, made breakfast with salt pork uh, because um, her husband was a, was a French fur trapper, and uh, they used to carry uh, the salt pork with them uh, wherever they went, which wouldn't spoil uh, it would actually last longer than a side of bacon would, uh, and uh, she learned how to make a breakfast using salt pork and potatoes. And uh, but basically, the eggs, whatever they could find, uh, prairie chicken, uh, things like that back then, and uh, whatever. And then it was passed down to my mother and uh, from from her, and then they all changed it to bacon. Uh, because uh, food was able to be kept in refrigerators, and uh, um, you know, refrigerators are relative. They were they refrigerators were created really some time ago, uh, but weren't well known in the families uh, until some years later after it was invented. And then uh, we had a refrigerator, and it was one of the old style um, with the freezer on the bottom instead of on the top. And uh, the freezer at the bottom would keep everything up top cool. And, uh, yeah, and I used to like the waffles and the pancakes as well. And, um, and But I never, ever ate any red velvet cake that you mentioned. That, you know, and you make me realize that, that must be such a good good dessert. Yeah, it really is. It really is delicious. And someday I'll have to make you some. I know you're probably going to love it. Yeah, I think I would. And uh, now McDonald's uh, was just beginning to start out uh, when I was a young man, uh, and they used to sell uh, hamburgers for five cents. And, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it sure come a long way. And then the Castle Burgers, you ever heard of them? Yeah, there's actually one up here in Springfield, I believe. Or West Virginia. Yeah, I used to sell them uh, burgers that were bite size. Uh, you'd actually get a, about 10 or 20 of them and uh, eat them one by one with one single bite. You put a burger in the, in a little bun in your mouth and you chew it up. I thought those were fantastic. And today, uh, my favorite burger is the Whopper. Oh, nice. Those are, those are really good, the Whoppers from Burger King. Yeah. But that's uh, that's what I liked. Uh, so there you have it. So, sounds wonderful. Now, what is your favorite dessert, William? Well, my favorite dessert actually is bread pudding. Because Ooh, nice. we were poor. Yeah, we were poor, and bread... Uh, you know, a lot of times bread would spoil pretty quick, and just before it would spoil, my mom would make some bread pudding out of it. And she used to make homemade bread, and it would only last a couple of days, but we had bread pudding every other day, and that would last for two days. And then we always had bread pudding in the house and with raisins in it, and, uh, oh, man, it was so good. She made it so well. And bread pudding, yeah. Bread pudding was my favorite dessert, and it still is today. I love bread pudding, too, myself. I actually, actually learned how to make a, a good bread pudding from culinary school. I think bread pudding is a wonderful dessert. I love it myself. That's a good dessert choice, William. Yeah, it is. Now, my favorite dessert has to be the red velvet cake, but I love all desserts, as you can tell. I also like uh, cannolis, too, since I'm Italian. But red velvet and cannolis and cookies are my top three favorite desserts. Very good. Yeah. I'll have to send you some. I'll have to send you some cookies for the holidays. That would be nice. 
I'm going to have to, because I, I want to send you out as a Christmas present. Huh. Wow. <laughs> and I know you can cook, too, you know, what a name like Chef Alex Cardinelli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to have you come up here and, and come up here one day so I can cook for you. Wow. Well, I don't know. I might not be able to get back home if that happened. <laughs> you might not want to come home because you got a, a personal chef cooking for you. Yeah, I might have to hire you. <laughs> That's right. That's very true. Now, my final topic tonight, and my final question is, now we all know America has introduced us to some foods such as fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, waffles, pancakes, red velvet cake, McDonald's, etc. Well, I just really listed a whole bunch of American foods. What are some of your favorite American foods, William? Well, my favorite American food is the good old American apple pie. Uh, I love a good apple pie. And uh, and and believe it or not, I like American chop suey. Do you ever eat American chop suey? Yes, I actually had that before. That is delicious. You're right about that. Yeah, that's an American meal. It's not a Chinese meal, uh, and uh, it it has those hard, crusty noodles that comes with it, and. Uh, my mother used to make some of that homemade every once in a while, but it was kind of tedious. Uh, but we used to buy the, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it, the name of the brand, but it came together in a kit. And you'd mix the kit together, and uh, you'd create the chop suey. And then you put them over the hard-crusted noodles. And I thought that was a good meal. And... Uh, uh, the good old American hot dog. I like the hot dog. I actually, uh, back then, uh, I lived in New Hampshire. Uh, we used to have a brand called Sconlins or Wagglers, and uh, we used to buy their hot dogs. They were case hot dogs. They weren't the kind you had today with no skin. These had skin on them, and they would snap when you bite them. You know, they would actually make a noise like a snap, and they taste so good. They were made so well back then it's unbelievable. And I'm not up there anymore in New England uh, but uh, I'm wondering if you ever heard of Scotland or Wagler's Hot Dogs, Alex? Yeah, I've actually heard them. I've seen them for sale at my uh, grocery store on last night, believe it or not. I should have picked up a few and given them a try. Yeah, they're very good and uh, they're put together very well and uh, we all know what goes in a hot dog, but... <laughs> Anyways, these <laughs> are fantastic hot dogs. Scotland's especially. Wagglers are number two. But, uh, yeah, I used to like the case hot dogs. So that's uh, what I used to like. Nice. I actually enjoy a lot of American foods, but if I had to pick some favorites of mine, mine would be a traditional uh, McDonald's meal, and that is the Big Mac. I have, I've always loved the Big Mac as a kid, and now I like the Big Mac, which is McDonald's signature burger. I also like McDonald's chicken McNuggets, and I like apple pie too. Apple pie is great, but one of my most favorite New England items and American items is what we call a whoopie pie, which is basically a um, cookie sandwich combining any kind of cookie, whether it be a chocolate, pumpkin, red velvet, vanilla, or chocolate chip sandwich together between some kind of filling, either vanilla, chocolate, or cream cheese. And that is good. And of course, since I'm in New England, I gotta have my clam chowder, which is good as well. Have you ever had clam chowder, William? Yes, my favorite is New England clam chowder, by the way, which I happen to have some uh, right now in my house, waiting to be eaten tomorrow. It's canned, of course. Of course, I, I wish I could make some fresh New England clam chowder. But uh, I like to use the whole clam for some reason. Uh, I remember when I was up in New Hampshire, we used to stop by this particular place. They used to have fried clams, and they used to use the whole clam. But down here, they use just the necks, and I don't like just the necks. Uh, but I buy my uh, New England clam chowder uh, in a can and uh, until I can get some uh, whole clams and make some fresh one day, I'm getting kind of old to 
cook anymore. But I remember when I used to cook homemade New England clam chowder, and it's so good. Yeah, it is, it is fun to make um, homemade clam chowder. You're not too old yet. You can still cook some delicious meals, I'm pretty sure. Oh, probably. I'm just lazy, I guess, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I am too sometimes. We're all like that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick commercial break here on the Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show. We're going to hear from our sponsors, Long Walk. We're also going to hear from um, Donut Dip and Tony's Pizza and Restaurant. When we come back, we'll be in the recording. So for those of you who listen live, thank you for listening live. In the recording, we're just going to make some announcements and wrap up this wonderful show. So thank you for listening live, folks, and let's hear a word from our sponsors. In the mood for Chinese food. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview on the Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show way back when, in November of 2014, and my guest on the Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show back in 2014 was my good friend, Mr. William T. Hannaford. So today we had a pleasure talking about childhood foods. Great, great show. All right. So today's show is being brought to you by Hakari Sales USA, School of Fish, Inc., Cheesecakes by Design, Dakota Networks Paranormal Hour, and AC Food Review on YouTube. All of those wonderful sponsors allow Cooking with Alice Cardinelli to broadcast for over an hour here on the Ace Network. So we're going to hear the commercials, and when we come back, we're going to wrap up this phenomenal show, folks. Hikari offers a wide selection of aquatic diets to help you and your fishy friend find success. With more than 137 years of aquatic experience, Hikari was the originator of species-specific diets long before others thought it was important or trendy, and the first to bring unique products to fish keepers like algae wafers, the world's first diet specifically formulated for Picosinus, micro pellets, the world's first micro-coated aquatic diet for tropical fish, Saki Ikari, the world's first probiotic enhanced diet for koi, goldfish, cichlid, and now turtles. And BioPure, the world's cleanest and most nutrition packed frozen and freeze dried foods, industry trendsetters when they were first introduced. When you're looking for the best aquatic diets your hard earned money can buy for your aquatic pets, look no further than Ikari. Your fish and your wallet will be forever grateful. School of Fish, Inc. offers everything an aquarium hobbyist in western Massachusetts needs. We offer the best of livestock from fresh water to salt water and everything in between. We also have the best corals and live rock. School of Fish, Inc. carries the best brands of fish food, medications, and equipment such as Hikari, Tetra, Marineland, API, and much more. Stop by and check us out today. School of Fish, Inc. located at 1865 Page Boulevard, Springfield, Massachusetts. And we can be reached at 413-543-1994. We're open Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Closed Tuesdays. Check out School of Fish, Inc. That's School of Fish, I-N-C, on Facebook for exclusive deals, specials, and see what's new. Are you looking for something creamy, moist, and decadent in your life? Do you have a sweet tooth? Well, cheesecakes are the answer for you. Cheesecake by Design offers you a wide variety of cheesecakes and some wonderful flavors. At Cheesecake by Design, you will find a flavor just for you. Whatever it be, a red velvet cheesecake, a strawberry cheesecake, or a cookies and cream cheesecake. We have tons of flavors to fit your needs. We ship fresh cheesecakes all over the United States straight to your door. So next time you're hosting a party, a family get-together, or a cookout, and you need dessert, order a delicious, moist, creamy cheesecake from Cheesecake by Design. Our cheesecakes are always homemade and made with the freshest possible ingredients. Check out our website, 
and call 336-525-5120 with any questions or to place an order. Are you interested in the paranormal? Do you find it interesting when people tell ghost stories or tell you stories about things that have happened to them that they cannot explain? Then, if you are, join me, Andrew J., on the Dakota Network as I interview paranormal investigators, cryptozoologists, and everything paranormal. You won't be disappointed. So please feel free to come over to the Dakota Network. That's Dakota Network on Blog Talk Radio. And listen to me live as I interview these interesting people. I will have paranormal investigators on there that are going to share EVPs. They're going to talk about some of their more interesting stories they have. So please, come over and check me out. You won't be disappointed. And thank you for your time. Do you like fast food? Do you like going to restaurants? Well then, check out AC Food Reviews. Alex Cardinelli is going to bring to you some awesome food reviews on the AC Food Review channel on YouTube. Alex will have some phenomenal reviews from McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Dunkin' Donuts, and much more. All of your favorite fast food places will be reviewed on the AC Food Review. Plus, Alex will dive into the local restaurants and give you some spectacular food reviews. So if you love food, check out AC Food Reviews on YouTube right now. That's AC Food Reviews. Make sure you subscribe to get all of our latest and awesome food reviews. Okay, we're back here live on Cooking with South Cardinelli on this fine Monday evening. And this was a phenomenal show. Now, before I end the show, I would just like to announce the next two Cooking with Alice Cardinelli. Now, I would like to announce that Cooking with Alice Cardinelli is going to be broadcasting live Monday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, and 4 p.m. Pacific on the ACE Network. So don't forget, Cooking with Alice Cardinelli will be broadcasting every Monday live at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern on the ACE Network. So last week we talked about red velvet cake, and this week we talked about childhood food memories. And next week we're going to talk about breakfast foods because breakfast food is one of the most important meals of the day. So next week I'll talk about breakfast foods, and I'll have some delicious breakfast recipes for you. All right? Yes, I will have some great breakfast recipes in store for you next week. And after the breakfast show, I will have a great, delicious cheesecake show for you. So the next two weeks, we've got breakfast food and cheesecake coming up on the Cooking with Alice Cardinelli show. So the question is, can you smell what Alice Cardinelli is cooking? I hope you guys do. All right, well, I hope you guys have a phenomenal week, and thank you very much for listening to today's episode of the ACE Network. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Cooking with Alice Cardinelli. I'm Chef Alice Cardinelli. Thank you for listening to the show. Have a great rest of your Monday and a great week. We'll see you next Monday for our next episode of Cooking with Alice Cardinelli. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Alex Cardinelli Show here on Ace Network. Alex hopes you enjoyed the show. Please check us out every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for our weekly talk show that will cover anything and everything. Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern for Chef George Morello Hour. Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern for our fun Saturday Night Live 
and every other Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern for Cooking with Al Cardinelli, where you'll get tasty and delicious recipes. Share today's show on your Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus account by copying and pasting our show URL to your account so that your friends can listen to our awesome talk show. Have a great night. Alex Perinelli's show on Ace is now off the air. And show. belongs to the Ace Network, Alice Cardinelli Entertainment Network. It may not be reused, redistributed without permission from Alice Cardinelli himself. This podcast was recorded live from the Springfield, Massachusetts studio and Ace Network.